Invisalign is usually a technique designed and was initially designed for people who had orthodontics before and had some crowding. So today we present a fairly simple case where you have actually spacing. As you can see, the upper arch has a good shape and it has some inter interproximal sp uh, spacing. Well, the lower is actually spaced at the primordial area and has some very, very minor crowding on the anterior. So I've have been asked to define why this case would be a case that a general dentist could treat. It's because, first of all, and for this you have to trust me because I don't have, I can't show you the patient picture, but the patient is orthognathic, has no profile problems. Only chief complaint is the spacing between the teeth. And as you can see as a dentist or an orthodontist, you can see that this tooth is not torqued properly. But really, the patient is class one orthognathic, has a good lower arch, both sides are class one, good intercuspation, shows a bit of a deep bite. But again, sorry, I got a little technical problems today. My uh, mouse doesn't work that well. Has some deep bite, some flaring of the incisors, but the deep bite is mainly attributed to over eruption of the upper incisors, which is probably the easiest type of overbite correction you can do. So this case really doesn't present a very difficult, uh, uh, a high amount of difficulty. So let's see what ClinCheck has done for us. So you can see that we have asked to intrude the incisors and by intrusion, you're going to consume some space already. So you can see that the incisors are being slowly intruded and there is not much expansion of the arch. Can you see that too? The arches are not really expanded. We didn't need to expand the arches. And by intrusion, you get the overbite and the overjet correction. So let's, let's look at it from a different angle. If I put the on the side view, let's say. And again, the patient could afford to have the incisors retracted. It would have been a more complicated case if we had to protract or to actually labialize the low incisors, which are actually well positioned on basal bone. So you can see that all we're doing now is filling up the spaces with retraction of the incisors. You can see too that this is a fairly old clean check. So at the time we didn't have the power ridges. And today, if we had to redo this clean check again, I would require or request that power ridges be positioned on the upper incisors because this type of movement without power ridges, sorry, this type of movement, bodily movement of the upper incisors, as you can see here, there is some tipping, but its bodily movement would be better off with power ridges. Why all the attachments, even if there's not a whole lot of movement, as you can see, the canines are actually moving distally. Can you see that? Maybe some residual space here, but it's difficult to uh, close all the spaces in a case like this. So this is an older clean check, but I wanted to use it just to have and give an idea of what is a fairly simple orthodontic movement achieved by Invisalign and uh, get again in conclusion, class one occlusion, good occlusal plane, Curvus P is not very, sorry, Curvus P is very moderate. You need, you don't need a whole lot of proclination of the incisors. You need some rotation here. You have good midline, good relationship of the canines, and the patient is orthognatic, so nothing, sorry. The only thing we should have done better, probably is torque the incisors better. But at the time, which is a, this clean check is about three years old, I think. At the time, we didn't have uh, the use of the power ridges on a, I would say, daily basis. So you can see the bite in the, in the back has not been changed. 
almost not changed. This is a good Invisalign case for someone who wants to dab it into orthodontics. Be careful, the not, all, all the spaced uh, cases like this are not the same. Some require a whole lot more uh, planning and this case was finished uh, to the patient's satisfaction. Thank you.